Minister Salman, welcome. Thank you. Now, we've been hearing here in Tokyo how the global recovery is suffering a new setback with growth slowing across the world. In your position as chairman of the IMS Policy Steering Committee, how would you describe the situation? Well, growth is slower than we, than anyone expected. It's slower in Europe. It's um, uh, not as fast as it should be in the US, not as fast as it should be to bring unemployment down. And it's slowing in Asia to a greater extent than um, was expected. But we are now in a much better situation than we were six months ago uh, when it comes to policy solutions. If you look at Europe, uh, there have been uh, major steps forward. There's still some disagreement on the individual pieces, on exactly how they'll work this out. But there's a much clearer sense of resolve and, and a clear policy intent. In the US, there remains a major uncertainty how the fiscal cliff will be resolved, because it's not just a short-term problem. It's a question of uh, a fundamental reform to uh, the American budget. Um, and there are challenges in Asia as well. So uh, I would say that uh, although the economic environment has weakened, uh, the policy resolve has strengthened in the last six months or so. So, as you're saying, many of the policies are in place now and it's a question of implementing them. What, yes. what were some of the main recommendations of the IMSC when I met today? Well, I think the, the first thing that uh, we've all agreed on is the criticality of uh, sticking to a medium-term and long-term narrative and, and not getting diverted from that. The problems we face are fairly fundamental. They're not short-term cyclical problems. Um, resolving the debt problem in, in, in the Eurozone, uh, resolving the fiscal problems in the US, uh, resolving the structural problems in the global economy uh, that lead to a better balance between surplus and deficit countries. These are longer-term problems that can't be resolved quickly. Now, in the short term, there's a price, uh, because if you reduce government debts, uh, in, in Europe, for instance, uh, it exerts a downward drag uh, on the economy. There is a price. So we've got to find some ways in which we reduce that short-term cost. And one of the things we discussed was the, the type of fiscal adjustments. Some types of adjustments are more growth-friendly than others. One of the things that we've all agreed on is that fiscal sustainability uh, has to be an anchor for long-term growth and structural reforms, particularly in labour markets but also in other areas, these structural reforms are extremely important for long-term growth. Looking at, at the IMF today, with additional resources to lend, uh, today Christine Lagarde spoke at the $461 billion um, in additional resources and also recent reforms to the IMF's uh, lending and surveillance um, policies. Do you think the IMF is well placed to, to help its member countries through this rough patch? So the key issue is not so much financial resources um, because we've achieved that. The key issue is that the IMF now has got a much broader toolkit uh, to perform its surveillance functions. Uh, the traditional IMF looked at issues country by country and mainly with regard to macroeconomic balances, current account deficits, fiscal deficits, monetary policy. Um, the new IMF is looking at the link between sovereign risk and financial sector risk, which is a very complicated area. And a lot of work has been done in the last couple of years, and especially in the last year, very good staff work on the linkage between financial sector risks and sovereign risks and uh, trying to sort of connect all the dots in, in, on that map. And thirdly, very importantly, the IMF now has on a structured basis a way of looking at spillovers from one country to another because that's the nature of the world today, particularly for large economies. Uh, what they do uh, for domestic reasons has an impact on the rest of the world and how the rest of the world reacts to that impact feeds back to, to those countries themselves. Governance reform. I wanted to ask you where we stand on that and uh, also what you think once the reform is implemented, how it will change the way the IMF makes decisions. Yeah. The shift in quotas towards um, the emerging markets was a significant one and the shift in the composition of the board seats and um, in, in the amount of say that countries have. Uh, was also very significant and we'll soon be concluding the 2010 reforms. They'll soon come into effect once the, the last one or two countries come on board. 
Um, the next round is important as well uh, to continue this evolutionary shift uh, so as to give greater voting power and say uh, to the emerging world. The right balance is not just a balance between uh, geopolitical powers. Um, it's not just a geographical balance either. It's a balance between small and large, between the poorest countries and the richest. And it's a balance between countries that are uh, open and contributing actively to the international environment and those that are important because they're large. Uh, they're all important and we've got to find a sensible balance, be willing to compromise um, and to find a consensus in good time. And now, Minister Salman, you've summarized some of the key decisions that have come out of these meetings. If you look at them as a whole, what, what is for you the biggest takeaway? Well, to me, the biggest takeaway is um, we all recognize the complexity of completing the European project. Uh, the problems that we face today are largely the result of an incomplete design of the European Monetary Union. It is the most complex political exercise uh, of the post-war era. Far more complex than having formed that original euro area. To be able to take this next step towards banking union, fiscal union and some form of political union is going to be far more complex and in a far more demanding economic environment. So we've got to be realistic in our expectations. That's the important takeaway. Being realistic in our expectations as to how fast Europe can move and how, how thorough going its moves will be. We've got to give them time and not rush the process so much that you get another imperfect design. On that optimistic note, <laughs> Mr. Harman. <laughs> yeah, thank avoiding you so much. an imperfect design is optimistic. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.